everybody, Miss Anne here. I'm going to read you the first chapter of a book called Fatal Fever, Tracking Down Typhoid Mary, written by Gail Jarrow and published by Calkins Creek and in print of highlights. This was on our Battle of the Books reading list a couple of years ago, and it's a, it's a very fascinating read. Chapter one is called Hidden. I am an innocent human being, Mary Mallon, Typhoid Mary. Early on a damp March morning in 1907, Mary Mallon answered the knock at the servant's entrance of a New York brownstone house. She took one look at the visitors and lunged at them with her sharp fork. As they flinched, she ran toward the kitchen. Mary knew why they were there. A few weeks earlier, a well-dressed man with a mustache had shown up, accusing her of outrageous and horrible things. Later, he followed her. He cornered her at her friend's house acted as though he had the right to stick her with a needle and steal her blood. Yesterday, a woman in a tailored suit and stiff collar had come to the kitchen. She claimed to have the authority to do exactly that and much more. The woman refused to take Mary's no for an answer. Now she was back with the police. Mary was sure that this time, if they caught her, they would not let her go. She should have disappeared when she had the chance. They had no right to threaten her or touch her body. Even if she was only a cook, Mary was not going to let them do it. Picking up her skirts, she fled past the kitchen and down the hall. Where could she hide? Mary headed for the back door. Frantically, she scanned the snow-covered yard for a hiding place, but she saw nothing. Policemen were looking for her inside the house and out on the street. She was trapped. A high wooden fence separated the backyard from the house next door. If she could just get over the fence and into the neighbor's yard, maybe she would get away. A wooden chair pushed up against the fence would do the trick. Thank almighty God she had friends who would help, would say that they had no idea where she had gone, would point out a small outside closet under the neighbor's front steps, would pile some ash cans against its closed door after she climbed in. Mary shut the door behind her and crouched down. She didn't know it, but she was not alone in the cramped, cold closet. Deep inside her body, billions of deadly microorganisms were hiding, too. The fates of three people collided at the New York City brownstone that day. The three had been born within four years of each other and had taken different paths to reach the middle of their lives. In late winter 1907, those lives changed forever. For George Albert Soper, determined to establish his reputation, the event would add another triumph to boost his career. For Sarah Josephine Baker, attempting to make her mark in a male-dominated and often corrupt city government, it would bolster her efforts to gain respect and responsibility. For Mary Mallon, struggling to support herself in an adopted country, her encounters with both of them would lead to a notoriety that has lasted for more than a century. The world would remember who she was long after it had gotten the other two. These three people were brought together by a dreaded scourge that left behind shattered dreams, broken hearts, and painful death, typhoid fever. I hope you give this book a try. Thank you for listening.